This is a video that you'll want to watch before you make up your equation sheet for chapter 21, the chapter about electric forces and electric fields. This is quite a big chapter. There's a lot of content, so I've divided it up into two Mastering Physics assignments. And so the second assignment is where we'll start getting into some integration, but for the first assignment, there's no integration yet. So I just want to make a few general comments about these equations. You'll want to write them out in a lot more detail with all the units and all the variables defined. But let me just jot them down. So I'm looking at the formula sheet, equation sheet that's on D2L that you should be looking at when you go to copy these into your notebook. Okay, so this is how it's written. So some important things to note. First of all, it is a vector equation. So force is a vector. It has a magnitude and direction. This r hat gives the direction. So r hat by definition, if you have two charges, doesn't matter whether they're positive or negative or positive positive, r hat is the vector that runs along the line joining the center of the charges. Now, whether it points to the left or to the right depends on which charge you're looking at and what the signs of the charges are. So that's up to you to figure out which way it goes. So if it's a plus and a minus, obviously the force is attractive between these guys. And so if that were the force, then r hat would be the little unit vector in that direction. So basically r hat can point anywhere it needs to point. So if these things are at an angle, and they're repelling, you draw the line between the center, they're repelling each other, r hat would point along like that. Okay, now notice how this is a magnitude of the charges. You do not put positives and negatives into this equation for the charges. So if you just want the magnitude, I would do it, I would write it like this. I put magnitude of Q1, so it doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative, just put the number in magnitude of q2 over the distance between them squared. That is just a number, positive, always positive. Then you worry about the vector nature by doing a diagram and putting the forces in the appropriate direction. So I've done a video of an example of this for um, two charges and I've done an example for three charges where you really have to worry about vectors. And that's why we did that vector review. Okay, there's also an example of all the variables here um, on in D2L, I've, I've linked to you an example of how to do that in your formula sheet. Now, um, this K Coulomb's constant, just beware that it's also equal to one over four pi epsilon naught. So K is nine times 10 to the nine Newton meter squared for Coulomb squared. Epsilon naught is called the permittivity of free space. It's also obviously constant. And what it has to do with, it's, it's how the electric field in the medium varies depending on the permittivity of that medium. So for example, if you have an electric field in air, you're gonna get one number. If you put the charges in jello, you would have a different electric field and you'd be working with the permittivity of jello. So um, this, this permittivity is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, and the units are the upside down units of K, so it'd be Coulomb squared per Newton meter squared. Okay, so just beware, you can use epsilon naught or you can use K, doesn't matter. Okay, the next equation that you will be writing down is the one for the electric field. Now this is a definition, this is a fundamental definition. So for example, if you were to ask, okay, is there an electric field in this room? Do you have an electric field meter? Well, you don't usually. Um, it's quite difficult actually to, to measure electric field. We'll see, we'll be able to measure voltages. But the definition of the electric field is if you were to put a charge, a little test charge into the space and you notice it feels an electric force, then there is an electric field. And the force it feels divided by its charge gives you the value of the electric field. Okay, so that is just the definition of electric field. Now, another definition for electric field that's gonna be probably much more important to us is that due to a point charge. So this equation, once again, we have an R hat. 
is a point charge. So what that means is you have a point charge in space, Q, and everywhere in space around it, suddenly there is this electric field. So charges create electric fields. Masses create gravitational fields. Things with weak charge and strong charge, nuclear charge, well, they create different fields, um, the weak field and the strong field. So, but electric fields come from electric charges. So that's E. And the definition is they point away from positive charges. And so in this case, R hat would be radially away from that charge everywhere and anywhere. This, you can put an R hat anywhere you like. It's always radially away and has magnitude of one. Um, now, if it's a negative charge, the electric field points towards the negative charge. So in this case, now R hat would flip around and it would be towards the charge. Okay, now I like to use an analogy here between electric fields and magnetic fields. So if we have the Earth here, big mass for the Earth, and we have over here a giant negative charge, Q, and so this will be gravity, and this will be electricity. And so Everywhere around the mass of the Earth is a gravitational field that points radially towards the center of the Earth. So that's little g, the gravitational field. Similarly, everywhere around a negative charge, we have an electric field, which points radially towards the negative charge. That's E. Now, the way I know I have a gravitational field is I take a little mass m, not big enough. The reason they call it a test mass is so because it's not big enough to distort the field. It has its own little field, but it's so tiny in comparison. So the way I would know that there's a gravitational field is this little mass would feel a force. And that force would be M. Oops. M G. That gives the direction. And it depends on the mass of the little test mass and it depends on the field. Similarly, if I wanted to know if a little test charge, now test charges are always positive, just like masses are always positive quantities, test masses. So if I put a little positive charge there, it's going to feel a force, and that force is Q, exactly analogous to the mg over here is the QE. So in order to feel the electric force, you must have charge. In order to feel the gravitational force, you must have mass. So that is, that's the definition of the field. Now, if you just talk about the forces, we also know that the gravitational force between two charges is G mm over R squared. If you want to make it a vector, you put a little R hat. And that is always an attractive force. Over here, similarly, the electric force is K big Q little Q over R squared R hat. Now we do do this. We don't have to do that, that over here with the masses because we almost never have negative masses. Still debatable whether there are negative masses, but that's a whole other situation. Okay, so there's the exact analogy here. Um, so you, if you've done a course where you've done gravitational forces, you're just doing it with electric forces. Okay, now, so we've got those two equations. Now the last equation on for part, that you need for part one is the one that gives you the net field. And so it looks like this on the equation sheet. That's supposed to be a giant capital sigma. Qi over Ri squared R hat. So what this means is, if you have a whole bunch of charges, you simply add up, this is an add up, um, the electric field from all the charges in the vicinity. Now. This is actually a really important principle. It's called the principle of superposition. It means that when you have a bunch of charges in a region, the interaction between any two is independent of the third. So in other words, the force of these two guys attracting each other is not affected by the fact that this third one is here. So you calculate that force. Now, if we're gonna do this one, two business, 
if we're going we're going to call this force the force on one due to two Let's call that f one two this one we go f on two due to one now whether you do one two or two one it, people do it differently it doesn't matter which way around some people will go they'll call this one f two one which is due to two on one and they'll reverse the numbers but it doesn't matter you just simply have to keep track of them and then the fact that these guys attract each other say this is number three this would be f on one due to three now that if we just look at one of these charges now you've got these two vectors and you're going to have to add them up and that's what this equation says it says add up all the vectors they all have their own r hat this r hat should really have a little i here because every r hat's in a different direction and you can't really use the r hat to add you have to go to the xy coordinate system and you have to do the, all the x's and all the y's it's quite a laborious long procedure but I think you only have to do that once. And there's an example of a video of me doing that. Okay, so that should be end of equations. Oh, needed for part one. One other thing I want to talk about, which is a um, for part one. Just quickly, there is something where we have two charges and we want to know where the electric field is zero. It's a classic question. I would always put it on exams. Um, so I may just ask you to do this for me on your oral exam because I really like this question. So the deal is, if you have two charges and they're of different magnitude, like say this one's 10 microcoulombs and this one's 2 microcoulombs, you have to figure out where on this line the electric field is zero. Okay? And remember, the electric field from these charges point in different directions. So the electric field due to Q2 is always in towards it. So it'd be like this, in. But the electric field due to Q1 is always away from it. And so Q1 would have an electric field away and away, and even over here, away. And what your job is, and this would be from Q1, or Q2, sorry. Your job is to figure out where is it that these could possibly cancel, the fields from one and two. And there's a tutorial all about it. The, the general rule is you go outside, they never cancel in the middle because they point in the same direction, the two fields from Q1 and Q2. The, the, the deal is that you go outside the smaller magnitude charge. This is where you're going to get E equals zero. And I've done a, I'm pretty sure I've done a video of that. And there's a tutorial about that. And there's videos on mastering physics. So there's a whole bunch of examples of how you do it. Um, so you need to know how to do that kind of problem. Okay, so that should probably end uh, this part.